All right. So today we're going to learn how to read the micrometer. Micrometer is going to be down to the thousandth of an inch. 0 0.001. A human hair is roughly three thousandths of an inch. And the difference between a good engine and a junk engine, if we're talking about bearing clearances, is three thousandths of an inch. So if one human hair is worn off a metal component in a car in the diameter, it could be junk. So that's something to think about. So if we have a hole, all right, and I see that this hole is 3.002 inches. Right, it's three inches and two thousandths of an inch. And I want to put a steel rod or shaft through that hole. I want it to go in and spin nicely with some oil. I would make that rod that's going in there a diameter of 3.000 to 3.001, slightly undersized. So that's going to slide in a little oil, it'll be smooth. Now, you guys have all seen the fidget spinners outside on the display case. If I want that bearing to press into the fidget spinner, everybody's seen a fidget spinner, right? That bearing is a press fit. So believe it or not, I'm going to put a bearing or a shaft if I want it to be a press fit. I'm going to make that 3.004. Right? Two to three thousandths bigger, and now it will be a press fit, so it'll get locked in. It won't break apart this, but it'll be a just a press fit. So those are tolerances. Now all our micrometers only move one inch. They only move one inch. And some of you have a 0 to 1, 2 to 3, 4 to 5 micrometer. This is an entire set here. 0 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, 4 to 5, and 5 to 6. A good set like this in Sterrett would be over a thousand bucks. Alright, probably. This is just a knockoff. It's about 150 bucks. So that's all our sizes. They make micrometers that are 24 inches with a little thimble on the top side. Make big ones. If you had to measure a boat shaft or something out of a giant ship. So, we need to identify the parts right here. And the parts, let's kick this down so we can see the light here. All right. The parts on this micrometer are pretty simple. Everybody should have a ratchet, this prevents over tightening. Don't take that little micrometer that's zero to one and clamp it like a clamp. It's not a C-clamp. We're light pressure on something. This one's measuring a ball bearing. The ratchet stop prevents over tightening. It's attached to the thimble, which spins around. It's threaded inside, and it's connected to the spindle, which goes in and out. The angle never moves. The frame never moves. And sometimes when you have to check multiple parts, we've got a little lock. Take a look at your anvil here, and when we turn the lights back on, you'll notice that the first sixteenth to eighth inch is a different color. That's because that portion is heat treated and polished and ground. Okay, so it changed color. This surface right here is accurate and flat to within the millionth of an inch on that anvil. And you can just think about it. This part, these tools are always measuring metal. They're constantly rubbing over hard surfaces, bearings, crankshafts. Okay, connecting rods, metal, all the time. Tens of thousands of measurements some of these things have made. And these don't wear away because they're harder okay, than the surfaces that they're measuring. So the anvil and the spindle, the ends of them are super hard surfaces because they've got to go over the metal. These are outside micrometers. We measure outside. There are inside ones, but I like to use bore gauges. So those are the basic parts of the micrometer. 
everybody's got different sizes, but they all read the same. So we are going to watch a quick video, and then we're going to go over how to read a micrometer, and we'll have a little race at the end. So we'll watch what someone else has to get you started, and then we'll go through it again multiple times. Micrometers are used every day by mechanics to measure wear on the parts. Having the ability to read them quickly and accurately is important for the mechanic. There are two types of standard micrometers. The standard micrometer can measure to within one thousandths of an inch, and the vernier micrometer can measure to within ten thousandths of an inch. Choosing which micrometer depends on the accuracy you desire. For this lesson, we'll focus on the vernier micrometer to make measurements within one ten thousandths of an inch. The major parts of an outside micrometer are anvil, spindle, sleeve, thimble, and ratchet stop. Before using a micrometer, make sure the ends of the measuring surfaces are clean and that the micrometer is properly calibrated. Use a piece of paper or cloth and clean the measuring faces thoroughly. Check the calibration of the micrometer by using the ratchet to close the measuring ends and checking to see if the zero line on the sleeve is lined up with the zero line on the thimble. Use a spanner wrench in the small hole on the sleeve and turn the sleeve until both zeros line up. There are 40 equal lines on the sleeve and each line represents 25 thousandths of an inch. Every fourth line is a little longer and represents 100 thousandths of an inch. For example, the line marked 1 represents 100 thousandths of an inch and the line marked 2 represents 200 thousandths of an inch. The beveled edge of the thimble is divided into 25 equal parts, with each part representing one thousandths of an inch. When the thimble is turned one complete revolution, it advances the spindle in or out 25 thousandths of an inch. To read a vernier micrometer, first add up all the numbers to the left of the thimble. Using this picture as an example, the largest number to the left of the thimble is 1. Write this down as 100 thousandths of an inch. Now, count how many 25 thousandths lines there are between the large number 1 and the thimble. As you can see, that there are three short lines showing. Write this down as 75 thousandths of an inch. The next step is to read the thimble. Look at the thimble and see what number lines up with or are just below the line on the sleeve. This is written as 9 thousandths of an inch. The last step is to read the vernier scale. Find the line on the vernier scale that lines up with the line on the thimble and write down this number. Do not write down the number on the thimble. Add up all the numbers you wrote down and this will tell you what the micrometer reads. In this example, the measurement is 1,844 ten thousandths of an inch. In this example, the number 3 is to the left of the beveled edge. This is written as 300 thousandths of an inch. There are two quarter lines, and 2 times 25 thousandths equals 50 thousandths of an inch. The thimble line just below the sleeve zero line is 6. One cannot count the number 7 since it has not come around yet. This is written as 6 thousandths of an inch. The sixth line on the vernier scale is lined up with the line on the thimble, and this is written as six ten thousandths of an inch. The total measurement is three thousand five hundred and sixty six ten thousandths of an inch. In this example, the four is to the left of the thimble. The number five line is visible, but cannot be counted since the zero line on the thimble has not come around and lined up with the sleeve zero line. There are three quarter lines, and three times twenty five thousandths equals seventy five thousandths of an inch. The thimble line just below the sleeve zero line is 24 thousandths of an inch. The four line on vernier scale is lined up with the line on the thimble and is written as four ten thousandths of an inch. The total measurement is 4,994 ten thousandths of an inch. idea. We've seen a little bit there. Now, 
We're going to pay attention to more details, and the goal is within 10 to 15 minutes here. You guys can read a micrometer down to the thousandth of an inch real quick. Okay. If you are in metals class, you're going to have to read this 10 to 15 times a period. In this class, the first exercise, we'll be doing it probably that same amount when we do our tap and die exercises. We need to measure bolts, drill bits, and drill holes to within the proper thousandth of an inch. So if we look at our thimble here, it's got some dashes on it, okay? Let's just start with 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Are all your numbers labeled on there? Some people have 0, dash, 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 5, dash, 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 10. I like the ones that have all the numbers so you can't really make a mistake. Now, one turn, one turn of the thimble is 25 thousandths of an inch, All right, point zero two five. Now you don't have to think about the decimal so much, let's just say 25 thousandths. Now, let's look at what's important here. Here's what's important, the edge of the thimble. I don't think that's stressed in us. The edge of the thimble is important. It is going to line up with another scale that is out here. These are vertical lines that are on this scale. And I'm going to write some numbers on here and show you that we got to think about this like money. All right? Quarters, 25, 50, 75 a dollar, right? Everybody can do that quick in their head. It's the same way for the micrometer. So if this is one here, two, three, four, the increments in between, you can see that they're different sizes. Little one, 25, 50, 75. 25, 50, 75. 25, 50, 75. So let's think of this. 125, 150, 175, two dollars. 225, 250, 275, three dollars. 325, 350, 375. Notice one turn of the thimble is also 25 thousandths. Now normally, we're gonna have to line this edge up near one of these vertical scales. The edge will be slightly past, maybe overlapping, maybe before. Depends on the micrometer. That's where kids screw up. That's where I screw up. The number one issue in screw ups with the micrometer is you're off one turn. So you're off one turn of the micrometer. Okay? One turn would be how much? 25 thousandths. Is that a lot when we're talking thousandths? That's a lot of human hairs, right? 24 divided by 3 would be 8 human hairs. So 8 human hairs, no good. Our, pro our, our tolerances are too far out. So first, let's zero this micrometer. We're going to put this, and I'm going to walk around while you do it. I want to see the zero right here lined up on the scale. You're going to turn the micrometer almost all the way in, and that's going to be the zero mark. So the edge right here, is it sitting over the zero vertical mark? Is it just past it? What's it doing? Each micrometer. If you got a real bad, annoying one, I'll give you another one for training. So, try to set it at zero, spin it all the way in, we're going to spin it all the way in, line that edge up at zero. Let's see if I can, if we can see this on the video, I'm just going to spin one in and show someone what zero looks like. Zero, maybe that'll hold, I don't know. See what we got here. You're perfect. Nice job. A little too far in. Because this one doesn't close, it's confusing. At first for this one. So there you're right there, zero. See it? The edge is on the vertical line. Edge of the all perfect. Alright. Now we're gonna move a little quicker. Now let's add a few. Let's add some point one. Let's go to three hundred thousand. So if we wanted to go to point 
three zero zero three hundred thousandths. I should have a line here that says three, two, one. What do we got here? Go to three hundred thousandths. I'm going to spin my micrometer from the zero. I'm going to spin it out to three hundred. And then we're going to start adding 25, 50, 75. So maybe that'll focus here. If not, all right, spin the wind. Let's go. Spin around. There's one. Two. You know what I'm saying, though? Yeah, okay, C3. Just, it almost covers it up. Try this one. A little easier to see. This one's got worn out. You got it? 300? Great, great. All right. Let's say that you wanted to get to 350 now. Where would this have to be? 350, it would still be at the zero. But I would say 3, 25, the 50 mark would be right there. All right, so my edge of the thimble is just on the line, just past it. Are you staying mostly just past? That's the goal, just a hair past so you can see it. Now let's say that that's 350, right? 0 0.350. I got the zero lined up on the thimble. I'm just about to pass the 50. Now I'm going to change some of these numbers on the thimble here. I'm going to change the main one that counts. I'm going to say that this is 6. 7, 8, 9, 5, 4, 3. So if that's 6 right there, I am 6 thousandths past 350. So all I do is add 6. So don't even think about the decimal hardly. Just think, hey, I'm at 350 plus 6. We can add the decimal at the end. 356.356. So that's 356 thousandths. Say it a couple different ways. 0 0.356, 356 thousandths. Let's try one on your own here. I'm going to walk around. We'll try one. If you've got, I guess, a micrometer in your house, if you were virtual, you could try using a micrometer along with this lesson. Now, I'm going to give you a number here, point six, six, seven. Where would the micrometer be? What number should be right here on your thimble? That's the most important. So you're spinning it. Where's that edge going to be? Well, I know I'm going to 600, right? I'm at 625, 650. I'm at 650 plus how many gives you 667? Seventeen, yes. So if you're spinning, you're at seventeen there. All right, seventeen. Say I'm at six twenty-five fifty plus seventeen. Six sixty-seven point six six seven. Okay. Now we're going to do a race here, the micrometer race. We don't have a lot of kids here. It's fun when we got 20 of them, 25. Micrometer champion. You don't win anything, just the pride, knowing you're the micrometer champion. You have to get three wins total. You can do a, you can have a loss, come back. So you can get if you lose, you're down one. If you win, you're up one. So here's the rule of thumb. I'm gonna write a number down quick. You're going to spin the micrometer, spin the wind, and raise it up by the frame. This is the frame. Don't raise it up by the thimble because it'll move, right? The first three with their hands up. Right? I go one, two, three, even though we don't have that many in here. So I'm going to go with the first two. One, two. First two to raise it up. I come over, I check. If you got it, you get one. If you don't, you get negative one, right? So, hold it by the frame, you got to have the correct number. So let's start off with point three three eight. Spin to win. Who's 
Muzo. Muzo. One, two. Last name? Spell? L. Yep. E. I. G. A. G. A? V. V. A. Okay. Last name? L. Yep. E. O. N. H. A. Leonard, right? Yep. Perfect. All right. Now, depends if you get one or don't. So I'll check quick. Cool. No cigar. What do you got? You should be at the. Nope. So you're both down one, but you gave it a whirl. Negative ones. You can come back. All right. You should have been at the what? 25 plus 13. Your thimble should have been at the. Thirteen. So, let's try another one. Point nine. I'm sorry. Here, let's go. Point eight eight one. Point eight eight one. Spin out to the eight. Who's gonna win? You got eight hundred. Use your quarters counting. Twenty five fifty. He's got it. Last name? Brinkley. Spell? B R I C K L A Y. Brickley and Lebo. Nope. He's got it. Leave this back on the board. He's back at zero. At least you gave it a try. Okay. Leave this back at zero. All right. So. I'm going to continue the game on, but I'm going to shut down the lesson for today here. And there we go.